We are at Almas Tower in Dubai to meet the Executive Chairman and CEO of the Dubai Multi Commodity Centre to hear about its consistent growth over the past decade and understand why companies from all over the world choose to set up their businesses here in the Jumeirah Lakes Towers Free Zone. I understand you have some exciting news to share with us about DMCC and the JLT Free Zone. We have uh, been uh, consistently single-minded focused on our uh, priorities and targets and DMCC has the strong ability uh, of uh, refusing to be distracted during Dubai's boom years and during the global recession. We refused to be distracted and we kept on engaging with our members and that has allowed uh, more members to come to DMCC and reach the milestone of 5,000 members. I think that's a very good point, Ahmed. The, the 5,000 companies we've achieved is indeed a milestone, but we're also witnessing today a global shift of business, people and resources, what we see from the north to the south and from the west to the east. Dubai and DMCC are perfectly positioned to capitalise on that and we will remain single-mindedly focused on attracting more foreign direct investment to DMCC. I'd like to add to that more than 80% of these members, of the 5,000 members, are new businesses to the United Arab Emirates. So DMCC has really uh, changed the landscape of this region as far as the commodities trade is concerned. 5,000 businesses operating from your free zone is quite an impressive number. How did you do that and what has brought about this growth? The DMCC uh, uh, management uh, from uh, establishing the decree, um, uh, crystallizing the concept and uh, engaging with the key industry players from around the world, the Gold Council, the World Diamond Council, um, visiting key centers related to this concept. With the uh, setup of the Dubai Gold and Commodities Exchange, Dubai Diamond Exchange, and the uh, and the consistent engagement of the DMCC management with the businesses has helped uh, organizations and these members really believe and really um, buy into the Dubai concept. We've also kept key experts in every commodity uh, initiative and that has changed. DMCC kept on adapting uh, depending on the market needs and what, what works best. So, I would say in the last 10 years, especially in the last four years, we've become very good at uh, uh, ensuring that these commodities business, whether it be pearls, gold, diamond, tea, gold futures, enabling these businesses to flourish and trade and the growth to, be, uh, to, to, to continue. What is it that makes the DMCC such a unique environment for businesses? It's down to looking at what's required in the market uh, and as our executive chairman would say, filling in those gaps. I think a very good example would be Almas Town, uh, where we're sitting today. Uh, Almas, being Arabic for diamond, is the centre of the UAE's diamond trade and now one of the top diamond trading centres in the world. How was that achieved? It was achieved by building a purpose-built tower for the diamond trade and including all the various services that they could require whether it be a diamond exchange, whether it be a vaulting service, a grading service, a boiling facility. And it's adding those value-added services and the relevant infrastructure to allow trade to flow that has helped uh, DMCC grow. Looking at the free zone advantages of the Jumeirah Lakes Towers, which is a 200 hectare, 61 tower development with over 50,000 residents and workers, the options are very simple. You have 0% corporate and personal tax, you have 100% business and freehold ownership. And I can't think of a better place to set up your business today. What role do you see Dubai play alongside other international centres such as Singapore, London and New York? I think it's an incredible achievement. In the short 10 years that DMCC has been existent, to have Dubai mentioned in the same sentence as Singapore, Hong Kong, London as a global trading centre is phenomenal. And that is primarily due to the vision of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum and of course the work we've done here at DMCC. What role does DMCC play in that? Well, I think it's, it's complementary. I think that each uh, sector has its own centre. I think in Asia it's certainly Singapore and Hong Kong, they're almost spoilt for choice. The US it's New York and Europe it's London and potentially also Switzerland. Uh, Dubai occupies a very unique position uh, in the Middle East because it's unparalleled. It's unparalleled in terms of its infrastructure, and in terms of its physical infrastructure here in the Emirate uh, and in the UAE as a whole, but also its uh, logistical transport infrastructure, whether it be airlines or shipping freight. 
Where it's unique is it's not just the Middle East. It's not a story about that. It's also a bridgehead into Africa and also a bridgehead out of Africa. Now, in terms of the idea of complementary, why do I say that? Well, a good example would be the, the a name in, in the press a lot recently is Extrata. Extrata have their copper trading center here in the DMCC. They also have a coal trading center in Singapore. As you can see, different locations serve different markets, and all we care about is providing the best possible location and best possible products and service for our customers so they can decide where's best for them to be. What is your primary ambitions over the next two or three years? It's doing more of the same. We have had a very uh, aggressive target set for us in terms of company registrations. Our executive chairman has said that he'd like to see 7,200 companies uh, by the end of 2013. That's a doubling from the figure that we achieved in 2011. That's a stretch target. We're well on the way to that, having reached 5,000. In addition to that, of course, it's what value we add to our customers. The DMCC and the Jumeirah Lakes Taz Free Zone is more than just registering companies. They come here, yes, because they get a 50-year tax holiday. They get guaranteed capital repatriation. They get a, an organization such as DMCC who partners them and helps them establish their businesses and to conduct business. But what our focus and goal is going forward is taking our toolkit, our regulation, our infrastructure and our products and services which will empower these companies to greater and bigger success. If they're successful, we're successful, Dubai is successful, the UAE is successful. What is the most proud achievement of the 10 years of DMCC? I cannot pick one. Um, I have a number of uh, proud achievements. I mean, um, the day that Almas Tower was sold out to end users, I felt a heavy weight fall off my shoulder only to, to feel some more weight come on my shoulders again and building the tower and bringing in the, uh, the members into Almas Tower. And I'm happy to say the Almas Tower is home to the uh, biggest names in the commodities industry. To name a few, uh, uh, De Beers Dime Dell is here, Rosie Blue, Dimexon, IGI, one of the leading diamond certificate companies. It is a, a true building that on paper did what it would promised and uh, you have everything related to the diamond industry in this tower. Um, I believe Malcolm categorically mentioned those. Really proud to have worked with the MCC for 10 years and gained the experience and the, and the network I have gained in the last 10 years. I'm very proud that we introduced currency pairs in the, in, into, in, the, in the Dubai Gold and Commodities Exchange. But I'm even more really proud that we introduced the first ever rupee futures contract in the exchange. So much that is being replicated in other competing exchanges. To touch on the sentimental uh, matters, in 2010 I was awarded the winner of the Middle East Investor Award of, for the hedge fund performance in 2009. Everyone knows what 2009 was, and for someone from the GCC and for myself, I'm very proud of that. How does this all fit in with the overall vision of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum? One quote of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum is, look at the opportunities within the challenges, not the challenges within the opportunities, and that is exactly what DMCC has done during the global recession up till now. And in fact, to the outside world, uh, DMCC has been growing seamlessly. Um, another quote is, in the race to excellence, there is no finish line. So we've reached this point, and we, have, uh, we are in the kind of final stages of beautification of the Jumeirah Lake Towers. We are in the building, and people said, people, people may be looking at this as the finish, uh, f at the end of the journey, uh, but as His Highness quote states, in the race of excellence, there is no finish line. So DMCC is adapting to the current reality of where we are right now and what we need to target. DMCC within 10 years have attracted 5,000 uh, companies to date. And in 2013, we're looking to surpass 7,200 members.